Hello, this is Joe. Today I'm going to be giving you a tutorial on how to install and use the ViewPower software for the Serta C200 range. So first of all, you're going to need to download the software either from our website or from the included disk. Next, you're going to have to extract it. After that's done, if you go into the new folder and just double click on the install view power HTML windows.exe. You might have to click more info and run anyway. So after a few minutes, the software will have finished installing. You can click next, next, next and install. Okay, after that's completed, if you want to go ahead and press done, you'll find a new icon on your desktop that says view power. So if you go ahead and double click on that, you'll notice a new icon in your system tray down here. It'll automatically load the browser up, which is how you access the software itself. If you lose this browser window, you can always go back down to your system tray, double click on the icon again, and it'll load back up again, just like that. The first time you've launched the software, it might take a minute or so to fully launch. Um, after it's finally done that, you'll be presented with this screen. As you can see right now, there's no UPS connected, so I've got no information and there's no, can't click on this UPS info, there's no, there's no information there. So next step is to go ahead and plug your UPS in. There's a USB cable provided in the box, so if you plug one end into the back of the UPS and the other end into a free USB port on your computer. And after a few seconds, it automatically recognizes the UPS and starts monitoring. And here you can see the UPS is in line mode, the output voltage is 243 and the input voltage is 241. Okay, so next I'll take you through the settings on the software. First, you're gonna to want to log in at the top right up here. By default, you're logged in as guest where you can read only. So if you press login, the default username is administrator with a capital A. And the, actual, the default password is administrator with a lowercase a. Press login. You can see once you've logged in, you've got the option in the top right to change your password. So you need to write the new password and confirm it. You can also reset it if you've got it and you're already logged in. You can change the language settings that appear to any of the support languages. So in terms of setting for the C200, there's not actually many settings you can change by the software. It's all mostly automatic. Um, so I'll take you through the tabs at the top. First, you've got history. So if I just turn the UPS off, you hear the beep noise, which means it's gone into fault condition, and then turn it back on. Now, if I've set the date correctly up here, and then click browse, you'll see that event, what I've just caused there, which means AC failure. So next we're going to go to set real-time control. By default, you want this as on, um, but you can choose to make the UPS uh, do a scheduled batch test and stuff like that. Uh, alarm control is what turns the buzzer on and off. So as you noticed earlier, when I turned the power off, we've got a beeping sound. If I press off there, and confirm it'll say successful and then if I turn the power off again go back to the main screen you see we're in uh, battery mode here there's no beeping sound that time you can't change that from the UPS itself just through the software so I'm gonna go back ahead and turn that back on turn the UPS back on 
Also from this screen, you can start a battery self test, uh, which should identify if there's any problems with the internal battery. So I'll just check that now. Press start, confirm. And if we go back to the info pane, you can see here we've still got mains, but the loads being supplied by the battery. And after 10 seconds, transfer back onto the bypass. There we go. Click history and then browse again. You'll see there's no battery issues there, but you can see the self test has started and it's complemented with our wedding events. If you want to delete this history, you just press delete all and then confirm. Likewise, you can export it like this to an Excel, Excel spreadsheet. In terms of settings for the UPS, that, that's everything. Okay, so just to summarise, uh, in normal operation, you should be presented with a screen like this. In UPS information up here, you should have line mode and there should be no audible beep coming from the UPS. You can see you've got input voltage, you've got output voltage, and you can see the load as well, which you've got a little bit of load on right now, just for the purpose of the test. Uh, fault conditions, so if we're going to turn the UPS off, it's the easiest fault to produce. You can hear the beeping noise from the UPS. You can see the UPS information, let's turn in battery mode. And if you go to your history, you can press the browser button and you can see the fault conditions here. Going back to the overview screen, you can also see this information presented in different ways. So if you go to the UPS info, you can see battery capacity going down there to 99% and your load levels now drop to 2. But this is essentially the same information as that's what's on this screen, but with different graphs. You can also go to diagram and see like a historic version. So you can just see there, it updates every second. So it gives you the last minute. There we go. See the output voltage dropped slightly there from 229 to 2.8. The easiest way to check the battery life is by looking at this box down here. You'll see it's got voltage and capacity. You don't really need to know what this voltage is. Just have a look at what the capacity is. So you can see it's 92%. So most of the settings that you'll need to find are in here. There's not that many because it's uh, quite a simple UPS. There are some advanced settings up in the UPS menu to the top left here. So if you go configuration and then email, you can set up the software to send out an email address to anyone you choose when the UPS goes into fault condition. You'll need to enter your email address details here, username, password, and then on this side here, you'll enter the usernames that you want to send the emails to after you've done that press apply if you go to ups menu configuration and event action you can see the individual events which cause an email to be sent or an sms or a notification so you can see just for example if you click on ac failure it writes the event to the log you can choose it to trigger or not trigger the computer alarm, pop warning dialogue, or broadcast. In addition to this, you can see email as well. So I'll just press trigger the computer alarm and apply. We'll also click broadcast, apply. And we're just going to go ahead and close this browser window and then turn the UPS off. And you can see you get a message pop up on the screen saying input event AC recovery. So I'll just turn the power back on. Um, and you'll get this alert regardless of um, whether you've got the browser open or not, as long as the software is running in the system tray down here. So I'm just going to close that and double click on this again to bring the software up. So you can choose at what point the UPS decides to shut down the host machine. So to do that, we go to UPS menu, 
UPS settings. Then we're going to want to go to local shutdown. So there's various different ways you can shut down the UPS. So we'd recommend to put it onto this one down here. So this will shut down the top, the host machine when the battery is 30% or less. The top one's good if you've got a very low load and you know the UPS will definitely last over that time. But if you can't guarantee it, the best way is with the capacity of the battery. So if you scroll down, you can choose to shut down the machine immediately or give you a prompt. Uh, you need to set these settings as per whatever your IT policy is. Um, but once you've chosen whatever you need, you can just click apply. If you're not logged in, you'll need to click, you'll let the prompt you to log in again, you can just press log in there. There's a few more settings which might be of note. Um, so the view status is exactly the same as this one up here. Um, you can change the date format to whatever you want. You can change the temperature unit to centigrade or Fahrenheit. Uh, but other than that, that's most what you'll need to know for this machine. Okay, so finally, once you've done your settings for your UPS and you're happy that you've set your email up and your shutdown settings correctly and you're happy with how to read all this information, you can just go ahead and press log out, confirm, and finally close your browser. You'll notice the software is still running in the system tray down here.